Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I've got a video covering the brand new Celebrations Monthly Challenge, which is called The Original 3. Now if you do enjoy the video, as always, please don't forget to like and subscribe down below, as it really does help out the channel. And yes, The Original 3. What this video is going to contain is a look through this article, seeing what you can earn, what point, and then we're going to go to the garage, look at what crews and equipment setups I've run on the tanks that you could earn, and then there's going to be gameplay at the end, and you can see how each of those tanks handles for a game. And yeah, I'm going to have it all chaptered out so you can skip to the bits that you want, essentially. And yeah, the original three celebrate the game's history with this challenge. What's this Celebrations Monthly Challenge like? Well, if you remember the Dream Machines earn ops, that's what this challenge is. So our 10-year anniversary party continues with the Celebrations Monthly Challenge. When World of Tanks debuted in 2014, the game featured tech trees from only three nations, the US, the UK, and Germany. In honour of the game's beginnings, get ready to earn premium tanks from these three nations and more rewards with the original three challenge. If you remember the Dream Machines challenge from pre previous years, original three should look familiar to you. If you don't recall Dream Machines, then here's how this type of challenge works. From March 12th, so from Tuesday that's just gone, through to April 1st, you'll earn points for every multiplayer and co-op battle in which you're one of the top 10 XP earners on your team. So you'll earn 5 points for placing as the top XP earner on your team. You'll earn 3 points for placing as 2nd through 5th top XP earner on your team. And you'll earn just a point for coming 6th through 10th. So obviously that means that if you come below 10th place you won't get a point. But that sort of stops people trying to AFK it and stuff like that. In honour of the Challenger's theme, you can... Also earn one bonus point in addition to the points above if you place among the top 10 XP earners on your team while playing an American, British or German vehicle. So you're more likely, to, yeah, more likely to see a lot more American, British and German tanks out there because naturally if you play any of those three tanks, or nations I should say, you'll get an extra point. Keep racking up points until you've earned enough to claim a reward, then head to the challenges tab to select a reward from the possible drops. And you're not limited to one reward. As long as the challenge is live, you can keep earning points and claiming as many rewards as you have for points for. You can claim non-tank rewards multiple times, and if you earn enough points, you could even claim up to all four tanks. Because Original 3 is the Celebrations Monthly Challenge for March, you can also earn the exclusive Celebrations Emblem shown below, which is this one here. Collectible Emblem 2 of 12, you'll be awarded your emblem after you claim one of the four tank available tanks as a reward. Visit the original, the official Celebrations website here on this link to keep track of your progress in the original three. So it's just like Dream Machines in the fact that the more time you put into this game, the more you can earn, which is the kind of earn up that I like, right? You can claim everything. You can claim, if you decided you already have all four tanks, they decided, if you have all four tanks already, you could just keep claiming loads of different boosters and stuff like that and keep doing that for like 40 points or something. And you can rack up loads of boosters and all that sort of stuff. Also, you could just end up getting silver for the tanks you already own as well, which is quite nice. I do like Dream Machines. It just means that you, the more time you put into the game, the more stuff you can get, which is always nice. So, Please note, if you already own one or more of the reward tanks, then instead of seeing that tank in the list of rewards, you'll see its silver value and can choose that as compensation in place of the tank. You will unlock your March Celebrations emblem when you choose either a tank or its compensation value. So for the M4A2E4 Sherman, you get 600,000 silver. For the Dicamax, you get 1.2, nearly 1.3 million silver. For the T26E4 Super Pershing, you get... 2.9 million silver nearly and for the FV4202P you get 2.9 million silver well that says FV4204 but the FV4202P is not a new tank we launched this game with only three nations and a dream now it's time for you to dream big and pursue your rewards so as you've seen that's what you have to do to get points and at drop alpha for 15 points you get a set of boosters for two times and three well for two times boosters for that sorry for 40 points then you get the two times and the three times booster point drops at drop charlie for 75 points you get 120,000 silver which seems low i don't think you'd ever want to take that drop ever really for drop delta 125 points you get four times commander xp boosters and you get five of those does that, does that mean you only get one of those two it's a little bit steep again not much really for 40 points at drop Echo for 250 points, you get three days of premium, which could be quite good for your free-to-play players, especially if you hit hard. You'll be able to get some free premium days and keep getting that, especially if you have one or two of the tanks or you're just not bothered about these tanks whatsoever. 
At 450 points, you get the preferential tier 5 American medium tank, the M4A2E4, which is, like I say, a pretty old school American Sherman that has preferential matchmaking. At drop golf, you get the Dicamax for 650 points, which is it's a decent tank destroyer. It's not my kind of cup of tea, but for 650 points, you can get your Dicamax. For 850 points, you could get the Super Pershing. Again, fairly old school, but it's got preferential matchmaking, which is really nice. And the Super P will always place a good hold. Will always hold a, hold a place in my heart. Always, 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 always. At Drop India for a thousand points, you could get the FV four two o two P, which yeah is, is again another very old school tank. They first got released when they moved removed the FV four two o two from the tech tree, and they basically moved it down to T eight as a premium tank and gave everyone that already owned the four two o two this tank, pretty much. But then they brought back the FV four two o two a lot later. So yeah, that's what you have to do to earn the points. That's what you can earn at each drop. And you can get as, these as many times as you want or as many times as you can earn the points for. Naturally, you're going to have to play a lot to get up to 1,000 points to get the FV4202. And fair play to you if you manage to get the FV4202 and the Super Pershing because that's that's quite a grind. I've always loved the Dream Machine's earn ops ever since they really did the first one back in like, what, 2016 or 2017, something like that? Because it, it literally rewards you just for playing the game, you know, just for playing the game and how much time you decide you want to put into the game as well. It's always nice for that. So yeah, let's go to the old garage where I can show you the four tanks that you could earn. So you've got the M4A2E4 here, look, which has preferential matchmaking. As you can see, it says it plays up to tier six. So in terms of equipment on this tank, I run the advanced loader, the optics, and the camo net. I run the camo net because it gets it down to 302 meters of still concealment, as you can see on the right. Which is really quite nice for a tier 5 tank. And add to that with optics, you get your view range up to 473. At this tier, where there's a lot of tanks that basically don't have much view range knocking around, having pretty decent camo mixed with pretty good view range means that you can farm a lot of damage without getting spotted. And that's something that's definitely an asset for the M4A2E4. And then, obviously, you want to make your DPM 10% better always with the advanced loader and the, the optics to be able to get that view range up and, like I say, have that mix of good camo and, well, decent camo and good view range. And then, in terms of a crew on this tank, I do run the Born Leader, Rapid Reload, Sixth Sense, Situational Awareness, Camouflage Expertise, Silent Driving, Steady Aim, Snapshot, Run and Gun. The three gun perks to make sure that the gun is as good as it humanly can be, because this gun is very, very derpy. The... Silent driving to make sure that I keep my camo while on the move. And then the camouflage expertise to make sure that the you know the camo is somewhat decent. These five perks you're going to take on every single tank in World War II. So then you've got the Super Pershing, which I run the advanced loader, the gun stabilizer, and optics. Optics to be able to spot for myself, and you can see you get the view range up to 499 meters of view range. Gun stabilizer, because this gun can be a bit derpy and a little bit frustrating in that regard, so it's nice to make the... Accuracy during movement and rotation better with the stabilizer. And again, always making your DPM 10% better with the advanced loader. And then in terms of a crew on the T26E4, I run Born Leader, Rapid Reload, Sixth Sense, Situational Awareness, Trap Mechanic, Rapid Aim, Steady Aim, Snapshot, Run and Gun. The three gun perks, because like I say, the gun can be derpy. I do want to make this gun somewhat decent. The Rapid Aim, because the turret traverse is quite slow on the Super Pershing, I want to make sure that the turret traverse is actually getting quicker so that's why i run that and then trap mechanic because i do tend to be a bit more brawly with the super pershing so i want to make sure that if my tracks get blown off which they do get blown off quite easily that they get back on very very quickly and then like i say those five you can take on everything and then you've got the fb 4202b which we run advanced loader gun stabilizer optics like i say gun stabilizer because well, you don't have to run the gun stabilizer on the FE4202P. You could quite easily run something like vents. It's down to you. The gun started to... Well, I was running vents for quite a while, and the gun was starting to get on my nerves with how far it bloomed out and how much it was missing shots on the move. And with the gun stabilizer, it was a lot nicer for hitting those shots on the move with having that, because naturally it makes your accuracy during, spur, during rotation and on the move better. So that's why I run the gun stabilizer. The advanced loader to make your DP 10% better, as always. And optics to make the view range really good so I can spot for myself. And especially when I'm on maps like Malinovka, Prokhorovka, I can rack up that spotting range. That Well, that spotting assist, I should say. As you can see, we've got nearly 499 meters view range, same as the Super Pershing. 
and then the Dicker Max, which is a German tier 6 TD. I run, in terms of equipment, the advanced loader, the camo net, and optics. Optics again, to be able to spot for myself in the Dicker Max, so that I'm not getting out spotted and that I can spot things at really quite a good distance. And then that means I can abuse the fantastic camo this tank gets and then just start trying to work the tanks over. Camo net again to make that camo fantastic because this tank is all about the camo and making sure that you don't get spotted because you have no armor and you're not the quickest in the universe. Advanced loaded to make the DPM 10% better. And then in terms of equipment on the Dicamax, I do run Born Leader, Rapid Reload, Sixth Sense, Situational Awareness, Steady Aim, Run and Gun, Camouflage Expertise, Silent Driving, and Muffled Shot. I run the three camo perks because, like I say, the camo on this tank is beautiful, and I want to make sure that the camo is as good as it can be while it's, you know, in general while it's moving so that I don't lose that much camo while moving. And then after firing, it reduces the effect of firing on my camo by 35%. Again, we're trying to gear this tank towards keeping its camo as much as humanly possible because that is the one strength of this tank as well as the view range. And then run and gun is a perk that you don't really have to take. I just take that because I take, a, I take shots on the move a lot. And also my philosophy is that there are sometimes when I'll be on ridge lines where I'm moving up onto a ridge line firing because this thing has ridiculous gun depression and then pulling back and run and gun will reduce your dispersion on the move by 10 percent and naturally if you're pulling up onto a ridge line and then pulling back that is your just your gun is blooming out quite a lot so that reduces that steady aim to make my accuracy 10 percent better as always and like i say these five you're going to take on everything run and gun you could quite easily drop out if i'm honest you could take clutch breaking instead because you're a turretless tank destroyer it makes your tank turn quicker that could be one thing you could do you could run the off-road driving if you feel like it's a little bit sluggish. You could run track mechanic if you wanted to in case of your track getting blown off, but you don't really have the hit points at this tier. So it, I wouldn't really recommend taking that. I mean, if you feel like your crew get knocked out all the time, pay, take pain tolerance. Or if you want your food to keep coming back quicker, you could take supply conservation. Or you could take green thumb to increase your camo while in foliage by 10% as well, because naturally that's where your tank might be as well, a lot more in the in the Dicker Max. So that's completely down to you and how you want to get out the tank. That's just how I set it up. But yeah, that's how I set up those four tanks. So what we're going to do now is send you over to the replays where you can watch these tanks in action and see how they handle. You just get a little general aspect of how these tanks are. So as always, everybody, I'll see you in the replays. So here we are with the preferential tier five medium tank, the M4A2E4. And this is the cheapest one to pick with points. And this is a Sherman tank with a little bit of extra armor just because of the angling and stuff like that on the upper hull. And you've got the pretty standard gun that tends to come with all of these low tier, tier 5 Sherman premiums. And by that I mean the tier 5s. They all come with this 75mm gun M3L37, which is a really horrific gun because it's pretty damn inaccurate. I mean, with the statistics that we've got, it's got it down to 0.36 accuracy, which is okay, but on the whole, not great. It's only got 619 meters a second shell velocity on the standard AP, which is ugh. 774 meters a second shell velocity on the APCR, which again is still a bit yucky. And then add to that, you've got a very good rate of fire at 2.78 seconds, but you've got 92 penetration on your AP round. 92, which is awful at tier 5. It's really, really not very good. And when you're facing tier 6s, your penetration is really just not good enough, to be honest. Add to that, you've got 127 penetration on the APCR rounds, and yucky. This gun is honestly fairly yucky. I'm not a fan of this gun whatsoever. It hurts pretty much all the other M4 Shermans that have this preferential, well, because all the others are preferential as well, and they are these tier 5s that all run this same gun, and it just hurts them no end. The tank itself goes at 52 kilometers an hour. You wouldn't truly know it, though, because it is just a little bit sluggish. You have a 13.21 horsepower per ton ratio, and yeah it, yeah, it just struggles along to its top speed. It doesn't really get up to it that easily. So it's something you have to bear in mind with this tank that it, it doesn't hit its top speed that easily and you will feel a little bit sluggish. You do have 10 degrees of gun depression though, which is absolutely beautiful. And um, with that pretty good view range for a tier 5 medium tank as 473 meters of view range with the build that I have and the pretty okay average camo at 302 meters of camo it means that you can stay unspotted in quite a few nice situations and then you can keep yourself farming with the really good rate of fire naturally you do have to pen things though 
And in this game that we are in with the M4A2E4, we're on Fisherman's Bay. And naturally, we're in a top tier game because preferential matchmaking tanks have really good matchmaking generally. So, you know, having a pref tank is always a nice feeling for being able to be top tier most of the time. And we're going to go into the town to go attack this Panzer 3-4. We get a nice shot snapped in on the move into that guy, which breaks his engine and keeps him pinned. Now we've got a DW2 in front of us. It's like, hello, Mr. DW2. You also don't have the best penetration. So we angle, 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 and then just sit here firing at this DW2. Obviously, he penned us through the side there, but the, the extra little bit of armor, just because it's, it's a little bit thicker on this M4 a to E4 chassis and then it's also angled in general as well at some it's got some little extra bits and bobs that are angled on the front that just mean that you do actually get some pretty nice ricochets at this tier as well sometimes it's not obviously the armor that you truly want to rely on you should never go aha I am M4 A2 E4 I bounce everything because it won't work like that but it will get you the odd ricochet which is quite Nice. And this tank, to be honest, looks banging. I, I really like the way that this Sherman looks. It's something about just the way the side profile is, the way the upper hull looks and the turret. Something about this Sherman that I just really like the aesthetic of it. And then Doge Camo, because Doge. But anyway. So, we're going after our brethren. Which is, if you are thinking of picking up the M4A2E4, our brother is the tank that we were just facing, and is what we're chasing. It's the Ripper. And you might be going, Ripper? Isn't that a pattern? No. That's the Ripper M4A2E4 Sherman. That is the exact same tank as this tank. It is the skinned version of the tank. So if you own the Ripper, which I believe has actually been given away in an Ernot before, may have been a very, very long time ago, mind, then this tank is probably not the one that you want to pick up because you already own it. Unless you want both versions of the Ripper because you absolutely love the M4A2E4, then fair play. Fair enough. You do that. You do you, bro. So, yeah. Anyway, it is the it is the unskinned version of the Ripper. They are the exact same tank in every single detail, except for the fact that the Ripper has its skin, and this tank you can put whatever camo you want on it. So we're going to go back to try and attack the TD that's towards their cap. The Death Toaster went back to reset. We try and get a shot snapped in on the move. And <laughs> oh, that shell. That shell velocity, everybody. <laughs> we fired that shell and it was like, ah, oh, I missed. Wait. I penned? Oh, okay. And we've got all the hit points in the world. We've got, I mean, we've got to be careful, to be honest, because the Death Toast has got good penetration and very good DPM. But what I'm doing is thinking, okay, you know what? I'm just going to rush towards the Death Toaster because we have health, and we're going to see if we can spot him and then get some damage on him. Thankfully, we end up getting the kill there because he just takes a hit just as the shell was looping in. We try and get a shot towards the Wolverine, and unfortunately, that one went wee to the far left and missed. But we did secure our top gun with that shot on the Death Toaster, so we'll take it. We finish with the... Victory, we're top of the team with 6 kills, 2.6k damage, 183 assistance, bit of credits, top gun, the high caliber, the first class, and the 1867 base XP, a pretty damn nice game there for the M4A2E4, just showing you basically what it does, it's, it's pretty standard gameplay for a Sherman, if you've played the Shermans, you'll know how to play the M4A2E4. It plays exactly the same as all the other Shermans, unless you're a Derpman, obviously, because Derpers love Derpers' life. We need a Derp Sherman premium someday. Just We just need a premium a premium M4 Sherman that runs that Derp gun, because it's the one thing we're lacking. We have all the Sherman premiums in the universe, but none of them run that beautiful 105mm gun. One day, Wargaming, one day. So, anyway, we're on to the second replay. And the second replay is featuring the Dickamax. Now, the Dickamax is one that I haven't really played that much, and that's because it's, realistically, it's not really my kind of tank destroyer. It's definitely a tank destroyer that wants to be a bit further back, use its absolutely beautiful camo, because it does have that 230 meters, 38 meters of base, well, of camo, sorry, when you've got this build set up. It's just, it's wonderful. You stay unspotted very, very easily. You've got a pretty decent gun. I mean, with this gun, you've got 169 penetration on the standard AP, with 227 penetration on the APCR rounds. This doesn't have pref, so it does see tier 8s, but the 167 pen is enough to go through most of what you're going to face at tier 6 and 7, and then tier 8s, you can just load the 227 penetration APCR rounds. You do struggle a little bit against some of the tier 8 heavy tanks, which is a bit of a pain, but it is what it is. 
And then in terms of the shell velocity on this tank, because it does loop a little bit on its AP rounds, is that it has 805 meters of shell velocity on its AP rounds with 1006 on the APCR rounds. Which is a little bit slow for shooting at range, and it's something you do feel with the Dicamax a little bit, is that when you are shooting at range, you really have to give a good amount of lead to be able to make sure that the shot hits. Which can be a little bit annoying for the type of tank destroyer that it is. Because generally, you will be quite a bit further back to make sure that you're not getting spotted. Unlike this game, which I am using the one position that I truly feel most confident using for the tank, because that way I can at least get my gun in the game. But like I say, it's not really my type of tank destroyer because of the fact that you've got to stay that way a bit further back. I'm far too aggressive for this type of tank because it's got zero armor, it's a little bit slow, and the gun's a bit derpy, which is annoying for a tank destroyer. And it doesn't really have that much alpha. I mean, 300's great for a tier 6, but at the same time... I prefer bigger alpha myself, but hey ho. The tank does also, by the way, just like the stirrer mill, because it's like a mini stirrer mill, really, it has 15 degrees of gun depression, which is where I say the ridgeline warrior in it is fantastic. It, so you can use a ridgeline, you can use any type of ridgeline, the gun depression is absolutely beautiful on it. And you can see in this game that we are on so far, we are managing to farm up some damage, and it's 12-9, it's sadly, which means our team is starting to lose. And we're just trying to keep this gun working as much as possible. We've got a nice shot into the DS Pazins there. And I'm thinking, do I go after the hammer? No, there is. I, I've seen where there's something shooting from towards their base. I've seen shell tracers, so I'm just watching their base waiting for something to fire. Because our people are spotted, which means there are going to be shots flying. So you can see I'm just waiting to see the shots. Unfortunately, our team behind us has lost. There's the shell tracer. We fire blind, we hit it. Then we see the artillery shell tracer. The thing that we fired at blind fires again, which means he's not moved. So we fire again. He ends up firing and gets spotted because he moved, because naturally... He went, oh no, I'm being shot at, moved and got spotted. Then we shoot at the artillery shell tracer that we saw, we hit it, and we got a critical, which means maybe we tracked it, which we did, and we shut down the gorilla. <laughs> Two near blind kills there, fantastic times. We're now going to go in on the hammer, who was getting pushed by the Yag Panther, and the Yag Panther shuts him down. And this is where we're starting to get attacked from behind, but we're also... There are, they've still got people alive in their base, which is not looking good for the old Dicamax. We fire at the Panzer IV H, get the nice shot into the back end, which tracks him in place. Looking for a shot at the M4 Sherman, maybe not. Okay, let's just try and get a shot into the Panzer IV H, which we do. We're starting to get shot from behind, and unfortunately, the Dispazins and the, well, actually, the Panzer IV H got a killer shot into us. Unfortunately, they shut us down, and we finished the game with second on the MVP screen on a loss. Three kills, three and a half K damage, 486 assistance, the ace tanker, the f not the ace tanker, sorry, the first class with the 1108 base XP on a loss, which was a pretty nice game there for the Dicamax. It just showed you how the gun handling feels, it showed you the gun depression and stuff like that, it showed you, you know, little bits about the Dicamax in total. Shame that we lost that game, but it is what it is. And we're on to the third replay. The third replay, this is the third most expensive, or sorry, the second most expensive reward. Yeah, second most expensive reward on the original challenge, monthly challenge, which is the Super Pershing. Now, I do have a video on the Super Pershing on the channel already. I released it about a month ago, I think it was, something like that. And yeah, this was my first ever tier 8 premium that I bought, which was the Freedom version of the tank, because it was on a discount at some point around... Uh, the, 4th of July or something like that. It was basically on discount and I bought it for like 5,000 gold or something in that region. And yeah, the Super Pershing. So if you want to see more gameplay on the Super Pershing, go check out that video and you'll go see how it handles more with some more replays, stuff like that. Talk about it a bit more in there as well. You've got 192 penetration on the standard AP rounds with 258 on the premium APCR, which means that you... For your preferential matchmaking, will pen everything you're going to face, except for something like maybe a Type 4 Heavy. Which, yeah, you've got the penetration for everything, which is definitely glorious. The rate of fire is pretty decent. The armor's pretty good. The thing is with the Super Pershing, it's the type of armor that is pretty good until someone knows exactly how to take it out. When someone knows what they're doing against it, that's where the armor starts to fail. But it can it can save you in a lot of situations just by getting some nice bouncers. Like I said, with the gun perks well sorry with the perks on the crew and the gun stabilizer this gun is actually pretty decent and you can get good going out of this thing and you can rack up the damage very very quickly obviously with that penetration now 192 on the ap it's far better than it used to be it used to be 170 which was ugh it was awful but nowadays you can pen an is3 through the upper plate with ap which is 
a glorious thing. And that's it. If you then suffer and you can't pen something, you can just load the APCR with 258 pen and have a whale of a time. I mean, the velocity on the AP and the APCR is 975 on the AP with 1219 on the APCR. That velocity is beautiful on the AP APCR. And generally, I really do like the Super Pershing. I do think the Super Pershing is a good pickup, especially for free, because you'll have a free tier 8 preferential tank that is pretty damn solid. The only downside to me, for me, sorry, to the Super Pershing is the fact that it's slow. That's that's the downside, because you do have that 40 km an hour top speed, which is most definitely very, very slow. But on the whole, it's generally a pretty nice all-round premium after the, a fair few of the buffs that they have given this tank. I mean, you've got 499 meters view range as well, which means you can rack up some mad spotting games sometimes, especially on quite a few different of the maps like this map, like Malinovka, like Prokhorovka. You can get pretty damn good spotting games off on those maps as well or something like Westfield even as well and um, because you've got that really good view range you can outspot so many tanks but yeah the Super Pershing is a tank that I will always enjoy and it's just it is a very good pickup so you can see this game on Moravanka we're so far up to 3.2k damage we're just trying to track the T29 again because people are starting to farm him and I want all the juicy assistance if I can get it we put a shot straight through his lower plate and we did get uh, 345 assistance by tracking but every little helps now going in on the CS52 lease who we go for the tracking shot and of course we hit the upper plate and ricochet because why not RNG giveth RNG taketh and we don't get anything on that CS52 lease because he just evaporated which is kind of sad they've got five tanks left on the enemy team they're all in the magic forest so we're going to try and hot foot it over there I, I use the term hot foot it loosely in the super pershing because it's, it's a little bit slow so we are going to just yeah try and get over there as quickly as possible to try and get something but they are a little bit low health which means that if they're going to drive out my team are probably going to have the chance to kill them more kills will be juicy as well the vk 3002 m drives up on top of the ridge line but i can't quite see him over the ridge line the scorpion g drives that's like hello mr scorpion g could you please give me a shot oh ho, ho, ho. we take those shots through that window that was a, that was a pat on the back me Pat on the back. That was quite a nice shot through that window. We shut down the Scorpion G. We can't quite get a shot into the T-3488, but we do get a nice shot into the Super Pershing side turret. And once again, we're just... Well, I don't know what happened there. We're just trying to get some more shots into his turret front. Because naturally with the Super Pershing, you can shoot the Capola. You can shoot the cheeks underneath the riot shield on the front of the turret. You can shoot the machine gun port on the front next to the riot shield as well. There's many different weak spots on the Super Pershing. If you want to know how to take it out, you just, yeah, shoot the cheeks underneath the spaced armor. You can physically see where the spaced armor is and shoot the cupola on the left-hand side as you're looking at it. And that's where the fairly easy pens are. And we finished that game with the epic victory. Three kills, 4,055 damage, 434 assistance. The first class, the high caliber, 1,842 base XP. Pretty nice game there. Again, for the Super Pershing, showing what it's all about. Showing the, some of the bonuses of it and then a bit of the limitation in that end game there where we were trying to chase the damage and we couldn't quite get to it. But we're now on to the fourth and final replay. And this is, again, another tank that I've featured on the channel. In fact, having checked, it's not that... Recently, the last time I featured this tank on the channel was nearly a year ago. It doesn't feel like it, but it was one of my Power Crept series tank videos, which is a series that I do very rarely. But the FV4202 is definitely a tank that is a little bit Power Crept. It's a little bit left in the dark. It is old school. It's got not much armor, but it's got enough angles that it can bounce shots. But you never truly want to rely on the armor of this tank ever because. If you want to rely on the armor, it will probably let you down. And that's a sad, sad time. And then, add to that, it's a little bit slow. Well, it's uh, slow. It's mediocre. You've got 50 km an hour top speed, which is mediocre for a tier 8. Well, for any medium tank, really. 50 km now is about average to mediocre. So you're a little bit slow, or you feel it anyway. You've got the 20 pounder gun, which has, you know, good penetration. It's got 230 alpha, which is eh, it's okay. But then you just feel like you've got a bit of a slow reload, if I'm honest. I mean, 5.7 seconds for 2.30 just feels like steady eddy. It feels very steady eddy, and it's just a little bit boring for me, the FV4202, just because it's so plain 
It's very, very plain. It's probably the way I put it. But this is the top of the reward for a thousand. You've got 226 penetration on the standard AP round, 258 on the APCR rounds, which we're going to need a lot of in this game facing tier 10 heavy tanks. And you've got pretty good view range with 499 with the build that I've shown you. And yes, I was a potato. I did forget to tell you the crew. It's basically the same as the Super Pershing, but with camo instead of rapid aim. Because I do like to make the camo a little bit better on this tank. Just so I can stay on spotted sometimes and keep farming up with this gun. And yeah, the camo you get down to is 327, which isn't the best, but it's not the worst as well. And with the great penetration on it, it's pretty damn nice. And I, I say, I mean... You've got a base. Well, sorry, you've got an accuracy with this build of 0.27 with that 2.12 aim time. It just feels like it takes a little bit to aim in, and your accuracy is okay. But it's because your dispersions on the move and during rotation aren't the best. It means that the gun does bloom out quite a bit, and that's why I run the gun stabilizer over the vents because it just felt like the gun was blooming out quite a bit. It was making it a bit of a pain to try and get shots on the move, and it was just making it a little bit painful to play. In terms of shell velocity, you've got 1,020 on the standard AP rounds with 1,275 meters a second shell velocity on the APCR rounds, which is beautiful. The APCR rounds do feel so much better than the AP rounds in that regard because the shell velocity is nicer, the penetration is nicer. It generally feels like a, a nicer round to use, right? But that's the way premium rounds generally are. And because of the 10 degrees of gun depression, it means you are fabulously flexible on a ridgeline, which is what you've seen in this game against these tier 10s on Lakeville. So... What we're doing now is going in on this IS-4. He is distracted by the MBT-B and the E-75. I'm firing APCR into his side, which I don't really need for his side. I definitely need it for his front, and even against his front, I'm not the most guaranteed shot to go through. But I don't want to... I've only got five rounds of APCR left. I don't want to waste any more APCR rounds against this guy in case I need them for anyone else. So we've got his side, you can see, perfectly unguarded. He is now being perma-tracked by me, which is why you take track mechanic on your heavy tanks, by the way. Because if he had track mechanic, I wouldn't have been able to perma-track him there. And we managed to shut down the IS-4, which is great. That's our first kill on a tier 10. Always nice to kill tier 10s in a tier 8. It's always nice to have nice games against when you're bottom tier, right? And we're up to 2.5k damage. We've managed to do quite well in, you know... Peek -a booming so getting shots into people without taking shots in return now we're going after the t32 which we get a shot straight into his drive wheel which tracks him in place beautiful scenes that's what we were aiming for and this time i go okay you know what i might take the hit from the t32 but i'm going to make sure i'm going to shut him down and that's what we do now we're going in to finish off the death star from behind which we do that's our second kill on the tier 10 right there and we're going to go charge it after what's left you know what we've taken the town we get a nice shot snapped in on the move into the artillery which is again it's why I take the gun stabilizer, because that's the type of shot that I was missing quite a lot when I wasn't running the gun stabilizer. We get a shot into the CGC, which we're hoping to finish off, which we do. Pascucci's medal in the bag. Fantastic scenes. We're up to five kills with 3.5k damage, 735 assistance. One tank left on the enemy team. It is a chisel. He got a shot into us. We've got to be a little bit careful, because naturally we're a one-shot now for the chisel. But I want to try and see if we can get some more damage. We can be a bit more aggressive, because our team is charging after him. I'm hoping that he might be distracted. And naturally, he gets tracked in the one place I can't quite shoot at. We try and get shot into the side of his turret, but I don't know where that shell went. And unfortunately, we don't get another shot towards that chisel. But we do finish the game with a pretty nice total for a tier 10 game, especially on something like Lakeville. Epic victory, 5 kills, 3.5k damage, 735 assistance. Ace tanker, Lever Schleilos, Pascucci's, and 2.1k base XP. Pretty damn nice game there for the British tier 8 premium medium tank, which doesn't get pref. It's a standard matchmaking tank. And yeah, that's the FE4202. So yeah, that's all four of the tanks that you can earn. That's how I set them all up and all that good stuff. You can earn any of well, you can earn any of the rewards as much as you want in this challenge, uh, just like any of Dream Machines up. And that's the video. So as always, everybody, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. A great success!